SpaceX took a step back but, undoubtedly, two steps forward on the previous day. They inched closer to the next Starship flight by successfully lifting Ship 25 off Super Heavy Booster 9 and safely lowering the upper stage to the ground. This impressive operation, which began at 8 a.m. and concluded around 9 a.m. CDD, received well-deserved praise from the launch and cash tower, as announced by Caffey Looters. This marks the final step of the mission, with one crucial task remaining, configuring the flight termination system. The SpaceX team will meticulously inspect the vehicle right up until the moment of launch, underscoring their commitment to perfection. Instead of declaring a two-week advance finish, Caffey Looters emphasized that each engineer, responsible for their specific areas, will continue to review all issue tickets. They remain proactive, continually exploring additional measures to enhance both the vehicle's success and the mission's outcome. There's no time for rest. These dedicated individuals have been working tirelessly. Presently, anticipation is running high as everyone eagerly awaits the sight of the fully assembled vehicle at the launch pad. Earlier this week, SpaceX captured a moment on Tuesday, serving as a reminder from looters to pause and appreciate the incredible work they undertake each day. Looters also confirmed that Starship Ceph a second launch license might be granted in approximately two to three weeks, raising hopes for an imminent Starship launch. In the meantime, Elon Musk took to Twitter with a cryptic message, Moon Soon. This tweet was in response to a captivating SpaceX video test featuring a Raptor vacuum engine, carefully chilled to simulate the conditions it would encounter after a prolonged coast period in space. The video showcased the engine's breathtaking performance and served as a noteworthy milestone for NASA's Artemis III moon lander program. These cold engines are undoubtedly hot in terms of their significance and potential impact. SpaceX recently carried out a cold start demonstration of a Raptor vacuum engine for NASA's Artemis Starship HLS. This test involved firing engine hardware that was pre-shielded to mimic the thermal conditions experienced in space during lunar landings. NASA, as reported on XCOM, has disclosed that the Starship HLS will utilize two variants of SpaceX's Raptor engines, one engineered for peak performance and atmospheric conditions at sea level, and the other finely tuned for operation in the vacuum of space where there's no atmosphere. This crucial test, conducted last month, was aimed at evaluating the performance of the vacuum-optimized Raptor engine under extreme cold conditions a scenario that can occur due to extended exposure to space. Artemis missions pose a unique challenge distinct from low-Earth orbit missions. These missions involve landers remaining idle in space for extended periods, leading to a significant drop in hardware temperatures compared to shorter missions closer to Earth. In fact, as far back as November 2021, SpaceX achieved a critical milestone under its Artemis III contract by conducting an engine test. During this test, which lasted 281 seconds, the Raptor engine showcased its ability to execute a crucial phase of lunar landings, the powered descent. This phase involves the Starship HLS departing lunar orbit and initiating its descent to the moon's surface for a safe landing. The test had two primary objectives, to demonstrate the Raptor engine's capability to adjust engine power over time, known as its throttle profile and to ensure that the engine could operate continuously for the entire duration of the powered descent. The successful outcome of this test significantly boosted NASA's confidence in SpaceX's engine development efforts. Testing critical technologies and hardware under conditions that simulate actual flight plays a pivotal role in advancing the development of Artemis moon landers. These tests provide early validation of systems required for the safe transportation of astronauts to and from the lunar surface. Subsequent data reviews that follow these tests continually enhance NASA's confidence in the readiness of the U.S. industry for the upcoming mission. SpaceX's Raptor engines are gearing up for their next challenge, which will be part of the company's second integrated flight test of the Starship and Super Heavy launch system. This development strongly suggests that Starship is on a path to success, a success that will not only benefit SpaceX but also carry significant implications for the broader U.S. space industry. Moving forward, SpaceX has made the decision to postpone yesterday's scheduled Starlink launch and reschedule it for tonight at precisely 11.38 p.m. EDD, making it a captivating Friday Night Lights event.
The delay is attributed to SpaceX's vigilance in monitoring the weather conditions within the booster recovery zone, which had been impacted by the aftermath of Hurricane Lee. Additionally, as of 7.45 p.m. EDT, the Falcon 9 rocket had not assumed its upright position at the launch pad. This particular mission marks a significant milestone as it happens to be SpaceX's 65th orbital launch of the year. Shortly after midnight tonight, the Falcon 9 will embark on a southeast trajectory from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40, Slick 40. If all proceeds according to plan, the deployment of 22 version 2 mini Starlink satellites is expected to take place approximately one hour and five minutes post-launch. Notably, the payload fairing containing these satellites was transported to the launch pad late Thursday afternoon. It's worth mentioning that the first stage booster for this mission, identified by tail number B1078, boasts an impressive track record with four prior flights, including its involvement in the Crew-6 mission back in March. Recently, the Crew Dragon Endeavor, which played a pivotal role in the Crew-6 mission and transported a four-member crew to the International Space Station, ISS, returned safely. However, in the context of SpaceX's Starlink launches and their increasing presence in the night sky, it's important to note an intriguing development. The People's Liberation Army has taken notable steps to enhance its space domain awareness capabilities, as revealed in a recent report. The report highlights the establishment of the People's Liberation Army Strategic Support Forces New Base 37, which has been tasked with bolstering missile early warning capabilities and the identification, tracking, and analysis of foreign space objects. This information, gleaned from a report published by the China Aerospace Studies Institute on September 11th, sheds light on China's commitment to expanding its capabilities in areas such as space, cyber, and electronic warfare. Base 37 is anticipated to enhance the precision of China's domestic space object catalog and is expected to share some similarities with the space domain awareness units of the U.S. Space Force, including Delta II and Delta IV. Its primary focus is to improve the People's Liberation Army's ability to provide early warnings regarding incoming ballistic missiles to join forces and to effectively track and identify the location, maneuvers, and operational context of space objects. Base 37 is expected to encompass a range of facilities, including tracking stations and other installations across various Chinese provinces and municipalities, such as Shanxi, Shandong, Xinjiang, Yinan, Hangzhou, Qinghai, Hubei, Beijing, and Chongqing. Additionally, it may integrate data from space-based missile early warning satellites, further enhancing China's space awareness capabilities. Some of China's classified Tonks and Jishushian. TJS satellites in geostationary orbits are believed to be designated for early warning purposes. In conclusion, these developments showcase the dynamic landscape of space activities and the evolving capabilities of both SpaceX and China's space domain awareness efforts, holding significant implications for the future of space exploration and security. The initial analysis from the report does not uncover any evidence of Base 37's involvement in operating on-orbit systems, such as the satellites that have been reported to potentially interfere with imaging and approach U.S. satellites. Base 37 also does not manage China's robotic arm-equipped mobile satellites like Shijian-21, which successfully maneuvered a defunct satellite to a Gyo Graveyard orbit, or Shijiang-17. However, the report does confirm that Base 37 is actively engaged in the integration and analysis of related data, as indicated by a comprehensive review of technical reports and patents associated with the facility. The report indicates that Base 37's initial priorities have revolved around enhancing the accuracy of China's space object catalog, establishing an internal coalition early warning system and improving the identification and tracking of perceived threats of significance. China's rapid expansion in space activities in recent years has necessitated an increase in space domain awareness capabilities. This expansion is evident in the significant rise in the number of orbital launch attempts, from 14 in 2013 to 55 in 2021 and 64 in 2022, with the potential projection of reaching 80 launches in 2023. Concurrently, 
China has undertaken ambitious projects such as the construction of a modular space station and plans to create a mega-constellation in low-Earth orbit.